humans of the internet. Welcome to this level 15 interview with Leslie, who plays Miz in the Gallon Horde and has hit level 15. Woo! <laughs> um, <laughs> it's an achievement. Some people never get there. No, Some people just, just disappear. Um, so we're just going to talk a little bit about your experience of this crazy thing that we made that turned out to be something else from what we were expecting um <laughs> and i guess mrs experience because those are kind of two dis distinct things um so i guess before we do anything else do you want to tell us about you as a person and how you got into D D and how you ended up in the horde sure um <laughs> i as a person am <laughs> I don't know, a grab bag of adjectives and labels. So I'm, there's a lot. I feel that uh, in my soul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's hard to pick one on any given day, but um, I. There are many have... interesting things, right? Yeah, I get exactly. it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I was always that um, super quiet, like, bottom of the top tier student. Uh, and. Yeah. Um, I was also, like, the athlete and stuff, but, like, I was this huge closet nerd that nobody knew about. Um, so I never played. Like, I didn't know anybody or anything for a really long time. Um, but I was teaching full-time, um, and I have three little ones, so obviously that doesn't give me a yeah. lot of time anyways. But when the pandemic hit and we went to remote teaching, I was like, I have all this free time. So um, I started playing online with people from around the world. Um, they introduced me to Critical Role, which led me to Facebook critter loving groups, which led me to, I believe, your post about the horde. And yeah, yeah. cool, that's exciting. So you've only played D and D online? Uh, well, okay. So I yes, technically, uh, I do <laughs> DM one shots for my kids. So oh, that's but, cool though. That counts. Yeah. That totally counts. We do that too. It's fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> cool. All right. All right. Awesome. Um, what what has the horde been like for you? It's a very different kind of campaign. Um, it's it's my my logic behind it was D and D's biggest problem is scheduling. So right. you make a story where people can dip in and out as their schedule allows. That was my concept. Um, and it is that, but it has also grown into something. That is basically 24 hours a day now um, in the Discord, which is a lot. Like, I struggle to keep up with it, and that's <laughs> kind of my job. So <laughs> I feel like for most ordinary people who have lives, it's it's hard to keep up unless you don't sleep at all, which seems right. to be the preferred method of some of our members. <laughs> um, <laughs> what is that like for you? Because you're a busy person. You have a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, super busy. Um so at first it wasn't that difficult because there weren't mm. as many. Um, and it wasn't as full on all the time. Yeah. yeah. And it was, you know, I could keep up with all the, the RP and everything. Um, now Miz is like on vacation out of realm yep. because I cannot yep. <laughs> keep up. <laughs> and, yep. you know, things will happen or um, people will like send me messages and stuff and like update me with certain things that Ms. might yep. find interesting. But um yeah, other than that, it's a super like quick slant. But it works because I'm so busy. I like I have a handful of unfinished campaigns that just kind of fell apart due to scheduling. Mm -hmm. So it's been nice to have something consistent and the group um of the Gent Horde that has joined has been amazing and I love them all. So uh, they're pretty they're pretty great people yeah it makes me so happy um <laughs> cool so yeah i mean one of the things we did was we we removed Ms. from the realm in story to give you that breathing right. room <laughs> um which is and, and you're not the only one like elena has also left because for a similar reason griffin much like both of us has tends to have five thousand projects in the air at any time so you know we we found ways to make that work for the people who just don't have the time to yeah. do it all day long and it's um, it's funny because elena and i are actually like advancing and going on the same yeah mission, so we're like yeah. putting all of it 
when when Adam did the overlay for this one, because we have the tokens of the missions that you did, it was oh, yeah, and yeah. The, the previous one I did was Griffin's one, so it was almost it was just a matter of like moving them around a little bit. Like they're yeah. very, you guys have basically done the same tra 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 trajectory, including yeah. being in on on the the secret stuff right at the start. Yeah, yeah, which is kind of cool. Um, let's talk about Miz. Because Miz is a, a, a delightful character. Um, she's very mysterious. People don't know a lot about her. She's not very mm -hmm. forthcoming with her stuff. Um, so tell me a bit about how, how she joined the Horde and why she joined the Horde and where she came from and all that good, good juicy story stuff. Yeah, there's, um, I don't know, there's a lot. Uh, she was as many roguish especially people are um an orphan um, <laughs> and um a man approached her orphanage when she was younger and she kind of gave him this like fierce look and activated her her thaumaturgy a little bit changed her eyes and flashed at him and he kind of noticed that and kind of invited her like if you want to get out of here i you know and live a different life and so she went, and um, he was the, like, he had a smuggling crew that he became a part of, and um, he kind of helped develop her innate powers um, and magic and everything. And she left for a very difficult job and was a sailor for a while, and left that because she found out that he had basically like absconded and disappeared and nobody knew what happened to him um mm -hmm. and so she joined the horde uh because she knew that number one she didn't have the skills to be able to handle him if things went bad mm -hmm. uh, nor did she have the finances to be able to do it so the horde promises you know power and money and power so and money yeah <laughs> yeah it's amazing how many people that's that's the thing yeah i needed more power and money um cool and what has it been like for her because she showed up with very clear motives right but it's a very um, weird engrossing place <laughs> yes it has been for her it, it was i remember the first mission that she went on was because somebody couldn't make it so she just like jumped in oh yeah and <laughs> It was, I think it was the Thirsting Sands one, and immediately, oh, almost immediately, she got put to sleep because she's like the lowest level uh, person there. <laughs> and um, and then Hella just like kicks her as she passes her by to wake her up. It was um, you know, it wasn't unexpected. She kind of felt like okay, this makes sense. People are kind of cutthroat. Um, but then people and the whole horde kind of shifted dynamics. Um, to having more of a moral compass, I guess. Um, and so that was interesting. It was directly a result of Elena. Yes. Um, and and Miz was definitely like questioning, like people who have collections have collections for a reason, and we're collecting mm. magical creatures, but we're also collecting all these budding adventurers. So like, what is going on with that? Um. But over time, I think that the the connections that she had really started to show her that, you know, that smuggling crew that she was a part of was not as great as she thought it was. Like, mm -hmm. the loyalty in that was fear-driven or, like, um, desperation-driven, whereas these people actually care about each other and, like, are willing to like do things for you and care about you and, and want to talk to you. So it um, has definitely, especially with the most recent missions, changed her outlook on how she's going to handle her former, um, her former boss. So. Can you tell us a bit more about that? What was her previous plan? What has she changed? <laughs> yeah. Um, so she was initially not really sure, like, um, roguish type people smugglers whatever are kind of sketchy people to begin with yep. and she was like you know maybe there was a reason i just want to get my share of everything and get some answers um 
And after being a part of the Horde and going on some of these specific missions, she is realizing how much she was kind of exploited um, for other yeah. people's benefits and is definitely more in a, I guess, vengeance type mindset of that was wrong and I didn't know, but yeah. now I do. So, yeah, I now see. I'm mad. <laughs> Um, there have been a couple of moments in her story that have been very interesting. Um, the carnival mission was a big one mm -hmm. um, because Ms. definitely had a moment with the tiefling at the mission. I mean, at the yeah. carnival. Right. Um, would you like to talk a bit about what that <laughs> was like for her? Because <laughs> there was um... some stuff that happened in the background that I'm not sure people are aware of. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, as far as the carnival goes, um, seeing a, you know, another red tiefling um, being imprisoned and, and treated that way was really kind of shocking. Um, not to mention, she was, like, hit on by some satyr or something, giving her bardic inspiration. She was yep. like, what is going on? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but Ms ended up giving um, Nemeth, which is the, the red tiefling, um, uh -huh. a note about somewhere safe that she could go to and um, some resources that she could utilize. Um, and she has plans for, for how Nemeth can pay her back for that eventually. Um, <laughs> but, you know, her her feelings about there have been some times where she's been very flirtatious with people and very, like, open mm -hmm. about, you know, those kinds of things. But she never acts on any of that stuff because yep. the idea of bringing another life into this world um, with the experience she's had is just not something that she wants to do. Mm. That's fair. Um, okay. Let's talk about Ms. and the sweets. What's with the sweets? <laughs> Miss always has sweets and she always gives them to everybody. What's up with that? Yeah. Um <laughs> I I don't know. I just have I personally have a ridiculous sweet tooth. Um and so <laughs> when Scratch started selling sweets, I was like, Oh yeah, we're we're doing this and you know, being friends with Jobin, it's like we're yep. eating all the time. Yeah. Um and maybe I don't know, maybe just the mom and me just having snacks is <laughs> Is a necessity. It's true. <laughs> yeah. I get that. Um, she gives um, sweets to everyone, though. She gives them to like random gods. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think that's more of a me thing because I made this sorceress who is obviously charisma based, and I yeah. am a huge introvert. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> this is just an easier way to RP for me. <laughs> okay. That's fair. Mrs. Charisma is based on the fact that she just gives everyone treats all the time. Yeah, it usually works. So. It does. That's, you're not wrong. <laughs> um, the other big one was the, you know what I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. the, the halfling pretending to be a slave child. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that was a a, a major thing in Mrs. Brain. Yeah. Um, that, like, the Titania's Wand uh, mission was kind of the start of that, um, mm -hmm. and her kind of questioning the people that she's with and her loyalties to them and how much she actually cared about them. Mm -hmm. Um, and then River, being the, that mm -hmm. halfling, who's not, you know, um, she was just very much reminded of herself and the the blind trust and loyalty in her former boss and she was obviously like this is a chance to make a difference in somebody's life and uh -huh. maybe he'll do something different and then he just she betrayed yeah, so you him. <laughs> yeah um and that was you know that was the the end of the candy for right now she yeah. ended up giving her candy away, um, and it hasn't come back yet because she's like, I have, 
lost focus on um, why I came here in the first place and the candy and, and everything is very lighthearted and fun and nice and, and everything and, and I don't have the time for that right now. I need to figure out these answers and do that and then maybe I can go back to um, that more easygoing kind of yeah kind of mindset. It was a very interesting one because that was a plant that was there, right? Obviously, you know, in my plan, but I didn't yeah. expect it to hit emotionally so much. <laughs> <laughs> but both, both Ms. and Harper had that like right. really visceral reaction to that character, which is kind of yeah. cool. Um, and then he thanked Elena in Elena's brain. Did Elena ever tell Ms. about that? Uh, no. I don't no, think so, so Miss doesn't know. So, yeah. Cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> it was Elena because Elena got the killing blow on Carlisle. So. Right, right. That's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. From out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, I guess where does so Miss is now running a theater. Uh. Ish. Yeah. Just Miss a, has become a patron to the theater. Yes, yeah. correct. Yeah. Um, that is, I assume, a you, that her intent is to make that theater a front. That was correct. the impression I got. Yeah. Um, how's that going? Do you have like in your in your brain narrative a, a thought on how on what is happening there? Uh, yeah, definitely. I overthink everything so cool we love <laughs> she that has, yeah she has um plans to uh she even purchased like a from strat a gray uh bag of what are they bag of tricks or whatever with a little animal oh, yep. Out yep. to give to whatever his name was who's so desperate for magic yeah yep. like here have some little creatures <laughs> um but the main goal for her is to take the vampire's lair downstairs and kind of revamp it, redecorate it, and turn it into um, her eventual goal is to have her own crew. And so this would be like her first base or, or hideout or yep. whatever underneath the theater. So she's sectioning off things, um, creating other escape routes because, you know, one exit is not a good strategy. Um <laughs> Things like that. So just kind of, and then with that one, that one or one of the other ones, um, the lady had given them a boon to change into a specific animal. Yep. Um, and she chose a mastiff or a dog. Um, mm -hmm. So she's kind of been practicing her her spying skills and things like that as she's brushing up on all the all the things she's gonna need. Cool. That's awesome. Um, how much does Ms. know about the lady and her her goals? Because I'm not um, completely clear on what what Ms. is aware of. She knows who the lady is, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, because she was on the Titania's wand. Thing yes, that's that right. Kind of changed the whole. Yeah. yeah. Um, and was part of that group that was kind of questioning everything. Yeah. Um. I would say outside of like the big announcements that have been made to the entire horde, mm -hmm. um, I don't think she knows very much more than that. So what are her thoughts on the situation? Um, she has obviously changed her attitude about being suspicious of the lady and everything to um, respecting her especially for her power and her ability to um what is the word to i don't know create such loyalty in the people around her without having to resort to underhanded mm -hmm. things um and so Miz is still like kind of eyes on the prize for her own thing but is definitely willing to do whatever it takes to maintain what the lady has made um, if only for the sake of her friends and the people that she's connected with. 
So her loyalty is based more on her peers than on the lady herself. Yeah, probably. Um, yeah, because she's, I mean, the lady is still very much kind of like an authority figure uh -huh. um, yeah. in her mindset. So um, her peers and everything are the ones who um, she has the real connection with. And I think that the, um, that's why she was so angry after the Titania's one like yep. thing because she spent the whole episode basically like running just yep. dash and <laughs> bonus action dash and run yeah. yeah um and it was like the closer we get to this the more probability that there is that the one comes back so she was like all of these people are out there risking their lives there's no way that i'm going to take a risk on the yep. wand not coming back with us yep so yeah um, let's talk about your peers. Who Who is Ms. I guess, particularly connected with? We've spoken a bit about Elena and Jobin, which obviously right. that, that's like Cub Rogue. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But is there, like, who, who are the people that she feels, yeah, connected to? Um... I guess, I, I, I would say it's, like, the people that Kind of joined right before she joined, so like Naya, Zing, Kayla, um, Morwen, Harper, um, that kind of group, uh -huh. just because she spent more time with them, and because I have not caught up on all the RP, so it's yep. hard to make connections with people if you don't yep. know what. Absolutely. Going on. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, is there anyone Ms. is not a fan of? <laughs> um, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Miz, not Leslie. Um, we all understand right, right, the right. difference between in character and out of character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think that um, she was very obviously, I, obviously Hella is a whole category unto herself because I think that everybody kind of has difficulty with some aspect of Hella. Um, but yeah, being Changed kicked a lot. the first episode. But yeah, yeah no. <laughs> But maybe Miz um, is not aware of that. <laughs> yeah, no. When I read that, as I was giving, I was like, "What is going on?" <laughs> <laughs> so, is this the same person? Yeah. Um, no, but I um, I don't know. I mean, if your first interaction with someone is them kicking you awake, that you know. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah that that's going to influence yeah. your perception of them. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that she necessarily has a problem with anybody in particular I think she has I think she has had a problem with like even Elena just because of the the moral compass and yep. stuff and I remember early on like Ms. would um do like ominous whispers around Elena yeah. just randomly <laughs> just because um and yeah I've even I, I've had an interaction with Elena that was like I don't like how loud you are. I don't like that you don't stop talking. I don't like that you have all these moral uh -huh. issues while we're out on a mission. But that doesn't mean I don't like you like, yep. as a person. So, um, yeah. So I think for the most part, she just kind of keeps to herself and like goes and hangs out with Jobin and eats food and and yeah, yeah tries not to. To stir anything. She's much more of an observer than more an interactor, so. Cool. Um, do you have... Well, there, this is kind of a two-part question, because my question okay. is, what's your favorite mission? But I feel like maybe Leslie's favorite mission is different to Miz's favorite mission. So I kind of want the answer yeah. to both of those questions. What is your favorite mission as a player, and what is Miz's right. favorite mission? Uh, well, I think I've mentioned the two that I would say are my favorite, yep. the Titania's one and the Return to Carlisle, just because uh -huh. they were, like, Titania's one was chaos, like, in a session. Um, it was an interesting I, game, because it was the first time that everything went very badly, and it was the first time that I had planned it that way. Like, I had planned it to yeah. not work the way T T Titania thought it was going to work. Um, yeah. And it was the first time that it happened. Up to that point, everything had been very, like, easy-boozy. 
So right, it was yeah. a turning point for everyone. <laughs> yes, it was definitely like I loved it. It was amazing because I'm like, there's so much going on and nobody really has a plan and mm. <laughs> And it was run it and was hope awesome. Eclipsis can kill things in the background. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, that was interesting because she only joined it because right, no, she out. like she was a last minute there. thing, yeah. and that game would have been very different without Eclipsis. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh gosh. Um. Anyway, sorry. Carry on. No. Yeah. And then Return to Carlisle obviously would be like. I just I can't even. <laughs> I just love like story progression and character development. So yeah. oh, it's you know her her anger at that moment was just amazing to feel. So mm-hmm. um, as for Miz's favorite, um, I think it was the Arcana Lost mission. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, because that one was like getting to see such like different illusions and choosing to blow them up anyways um <laughs> and and seeing the different types of arcana loss i don't even know what they're called but the variations of them yep. you know and and feeling like there was power out there that she hadn't experienced before identified before and uh but could still kind of rationalize with and and deal with was mm-hmm. was really cool. Awesome. Um, is there anything coming up that you're particularly like? I want to be involved in that. That looks interesting. Um, that you're particularly looking forward to as a player, I guess, or as Ms. Um, let me see. I, um, I. I know that there's a mission to the Crowded Otter or some kind yep. of cavern or something that looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. So I I personally am excited for that yep. one. That sounds like a really cool mission. But as for Miz, I think she is kind of just excited to do what she's been doing with the with the theater and everything Mm -hmm. and and working on that so I think that he's most excited about coming back to the realm and having a renewed sense of purpose as Mm -hmm. she finishes her final um her final missions um for the lady and kind of seeing taking advantage of of that power at that she's going to be gaining and yep um and all of that so so it's less about the missions and more about finish the contract and get on with your life. Yeah, and she her. has been yeah. um yeah, her vendetta, yeah. <laughs> been saving up her her money for um to buy her own ship, which she is uh excited about. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Um that sort of answers my next question, which is what oh, does okay. Ms. want to get out of this? I feel like you've just told us that. Yeah. Um, okay, so as a player, mm-hmm. I ask everyone this because it gives me good ideas. Is there anything we haven't done that you would like to see in a future mission? Um, I sadly cannot say that I've seen every mission, so that's that's fine. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of hard to say whether we've done it or not. Um, I don't know i feel like there are obviously some that are more combat heavy but like Mm -hmm. some that are more um i don't know not necessarily like charisma based like rping type heavy um but kind of like the uh the gambling one with the uh the cloud cloud giants giants one yep yeah getting to see like tense moments that are you know I feel like in most missions we try the talking thing and then we just start hitting things. Yeah, did you watch so. yesterday's by any chance? I did not. Yeah. So yesterday's was very much a a there were no, there was no fighting. Oh wow! It was zero combat, and yet at least three of the players were crying by the end. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Well, what if you choose to do more of those? I personally don't want to be in them because I personally like 
when I had to talk to um uh, I can't even remember his name, but like the the alchemist guy that we met that we were gonna Don? bring back. Amnon. Yes. Yeah. I was like, what are what am I doing in here? I'm the only person in here. I have no idea what I'm doing. So um uh, yeah, <laughs> it was just stressful for me. <laughs> but I think it's fun to watch other characters in those <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so you just need to go on those missions with Elena because you know that Elena's going to take yeah, points. No, I, yeah, no, I purposefully choose them. And then I think <laughs> Morwen or Elena or somebody dropped out of that one. Ah, and, and then and you I had was to. Left yeah. With the charisma. <laughs> You're the not. sorcerer. Go and charm people. Amazing. Yeah. Um, okay. Is there anything else you would like to tell us about Miz that we don't already know? Drop your secrets. What's her deep dark secret? <laughs> um, we do this at the end, so people have to watch the whole thing. To right, get the right. Secrets. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> I okay. Let's see. Um, she is planning to use Nemeth, the um, the red chief thing from the mm -hmm. carnival, um, as kind of a once she finds her former boss as a kind of test for him to see oh. how he reacts to a red tiefling being in the area and doing that kind of stuff um and she also plans on naming her ship the lady so yeah that makes <laughs> me really a felix <laughs> still with ones i can think of right now so cool that's awesome i think she's a really interesting character um, because yeah. because there's so much about her that is just it, she plays everything so close to the chest. But there's there there the, there are these moments that show that there's all this stuff going on. It's I I very much enjoy her presence in missions for that reason. There's because there's it's always interesting. <laughs> She's not yeah, predictable, it's, and it's I love a it. A lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so thank you for bringing her to the horde and for being part of this. Yeah, ridiculous thank you thing. for having the horde. It's been the best like community that I've been a part of in a long time. So. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad we try to keep it good. That is a conscious thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank make you. Make sure it's good. Um, cool. Well, we don't. I think you don't yet have your next mission scheduled yes. as we record this, so it will be aired just before Miz's next mission. So if you're watching this live on YouTube, as it is, go to Sparrowball on Twitch afterwards and watch Miz's next mission, insert name here. Yeah. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great, whatever it is, I'm sure. I'm probably um, not going to die. So. Well, we'll see. <laughs> She's only gone, gotten close maybe once or twice. So. I haven't killed anyone yet in a way that's stuck. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. That's what counts, right? I mean, I'm totally up with being the the <laughs> the first one. The first, but you know, it might be Rian. It is obviously. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Thank you for spending your time with me today and telling us about your awesome character. Um. And we very much look forward to seeing what happens next in her journey. Um, with your last five five missions, mm -hmm. and how that pans out, <laughs> it'll be yeah. interesting. Um, yeah, everyone watching, go to Twitch and hit the follow button and the subscribe button, and also on YouTube, do the things. Um, and we will see you soon. Um, hopefully, have a beautiful time zone. Thanks for watching.